this dish is pretty simple. You're not going to need too many ingredients. Uh, the one main ingredient that you'll need are pig's feet, and I was lucky enough to uh, find them at my local grocery store, and they were pre-cut and pre-washed, so they are ready to go. If, though, you get them from, I don't know, a butcher or a farm or what, um, make sure that they're they're washed nice and good, uh, and you're going to want to either cut them up into pieces like this, or uh, if they're whole, you can cut a uh, slit in the skin so that all the fat renders out of them when they're cooking. You're also going to need an onion, um, preferably whole, uh, but I had these pieces left over from my last dish, so I'm going to throw those in as well. Some garlic, a few bay leaves, um, maybe five let's say. Don't need too many because they're going to be cooking for a while. And some peppercorns. So the first thing we're going to do is put our pig's feet into a big pot. Gotta say that this is one of the creepier uh, meats that I've dealt with. I'm usually not squeamish about meats, and you know, from that intro, it would seem that I wasn't. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that the color of the skin on those pig's feet kind of looks like the color of my skin. It's kind of creeping me out a little bit. That's all right though. We're gonna just uh, deal with the fact that it is food and it's gonna taste really good hopefully when we're done. So next thing is let's take some water and we're gonna cover our feet just above our surface plus a little bit. So we're gonna turn our stove top onto high and we're gonna boil these suckers. All right, now that we're at a boil here, uh, you can see there's a bunch of foam on top, so I'm gonna go ahead and skim that off and throw it in the sink. Okay. Okay. And now that's nice and skimmed off, I'm gonna turn this guy down to low, real low. Don't want to boil it over. A nice cover on it and we're gonna leave this for a long time uh, some recipes say six hours some say three I'm gonna split the difference and say four hours maybe so I'm gonna check on it every once in a while but for now I'm going to do my laundry because it's the weekend and I need clothes so see you in a bit all right so about three hours have passed at this point um, so what we're going to do is put in the rest of our ingredients. So let me take off this lid. And you can already see the meat is starting to like just melt off that bone. So just throw that onion in there. Ooh. It's kind of weird putting a whole onion in there, but I guess it'll start to dissolve a little bit. We put in a whole bunch of garlic just to boost that flavor a little bit. Don't worry about peeling it because <clears throat> you're going to strain all this stuff out anyway. Ew, bay leaves. And uh, peppercorns. Give it a stir. Put that stuff under there. Oh man, look at this. It's like already Alright, almost done. I'll cover that back up for another hour. Alright, so it's been an hour, so our meat should be ready, and it definitely smells a lot soupier in here now that we put uh, the onions and garlic and all the other ingredients in there. So let's grab it off the stove and uh, get to work. one that I didn't cut up. It's so squishy. I'm taking out all of the non-meat ingredients, putting them to the side. Actually, some of that garlic might be good inside of the stuff. And this is kind of cool. You can see all of the marrow has just like gelatinized inside of there. Let's 
scrape all this stuff off and put the bones off to the side, put the meat in here. So that Pyrex is actually a little too big for our purposes, so I'm going to transfer uh, all this stuff into the smaller one, just because I like doing dishes, apparently. And make sure to give it a, another final pass, just to make sure there are no bones lingering in there. Do a nice little uh, chop. And I'm pour this stuff through, but use a strainer so you don't get any extra peppercorns or a lot of gross thick particles still in there. Looks absolutely disgusting, but hopefully uh, once it's congealed, it'll be nice and tasty. So I'm going to cover this up with some plastic wrap. I can find the end of it. As you can see, I'm really bad at plastic wrap, so hopefully you're better at this than I am. Yeah. We're just going to pop this in the fridge uh, for at least a few hours. Probably not overnight because I don't want to have to get up tomorrow and do the the finale. So, all right. So I've had the holodets chilling in my fridge for a while, uh, so it should be congealed by now. Uh, and so I've got some toast grilling, or if you call it toast at that point, it's a grill. I don't, whatever. Uh, toast toasting over there. Uh, it's recommended to put some uh, mustard on there. I didn't have any brown mustard, so I got some uh, yellow mustard. I don't know. We're just gonna try it out and see how it goes. Ready? Let's grill marks going on. Throw a little bit of stuff on here. Let's grab this one here. <clears throat> One thing you'll notice uh, is that the recipe said to strain it through cheesecloth. I did not have cheesecloth. As you saw, I used a strainer. So it's not as clear as um, the photos that you may have seen online if you took a look. Um, it kind of looks pretty gross. There's all these chunks floating around that I probably should have chopped up a little smaller. But you know what? Looks isn't everything. Hoping the flavor will outweigh the looks. So let's grab some slivers of this stuff. It's definitely ready to be eaten. Because it's nice and solidified. Doesn't that look nice? Hey, check it out. We can put some, some bay leaves as a garnish. Sell this for you know twenty dollars at some restaurant down in Soho. Anyway, let's uh, take a bite and see how this is. Hmm. I mean, honestly, it doesn't have too much flavor. I feel like there was almost too much of the gelatin broth in there versus the amount of meat that came out of there. Yeah, you can see it's pretty rubbery. Not as meaty as I would have liked it. And judging by, you know, the photos that I had seen online before making this, it looks kind of similar in terms of consistency. It, it's not supposed to be meat heavy. It's supposed to be more of the gelatin side of things. So, I, get, I don't know, let's try putting some more mustard on this and see if it can, we can rectify the situation. But honestly, that's not saying, any, saying much about the holodets itself. Now, if you know, if you know better than me, if you are 
Russian and you've had this before uh, and I did this completely wrong, let me know in the comments because this doesn't... I, I, I would not... I don't know if I'm going to eat all of this. Uh, not... <laughs> no, I'm not going to eat all that. So, let's see. I like head cheeses and pressure meats and all that sort of thing. But the flavor just isn't there. Which is surprising because the smell in this kitchen after cooking that stuff for four hours was, it smelled like a, a good soup. You know, you had the onion in there, you had the bay leaves. Uh, everything just like filled the room. And uh, it's kind of a shame, you know? But I guess that's the uh, point of the show, right? It's to try new things, see if we like them, uh, see if we can pass or fail. And this is a, it's like a D student. So, sorry Russia, but I don't think so. <laughs>